Good evening, viewers, and welcome to the Live and Lee show. Delighted to be joined by two gentlemen that will tell us all about the incredible aviation history of Port Leash. First, we have Alan Phelan, who is the co-chairperson of the Fitzmaurice Commemoration Committee. Alan, how are you this evening? I'm great, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting us. You're very welcome. I hope the drive down from Dublin wasn't too wet. It's bad. It's the last bit into Port Leash now, but it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Good, good. And then beside Alan, we're delighted to be joined by Michael Parsons. And Michael, as he said off camera, has quite a few strings to his bow. So Michael is chairperson, chairperson of the Heritage Council, vice president of the Leash Heritage Society, and member of both the Port Leash Plain Commemoration uh, Committee and the Fitzmaurice Commemoration Committee. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm very pleased to, to be involved in such uh, what I regard as a marvellous story of Port Leash's past, of the aviation past. Alan, of course, will tell you uh, more about it, but and indeed I may throw in an occasional uh, thing as well. But it's it's a marvellous thing for Leash. Great story. It's an incredible story that went missing, dare we say, for almost a century. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll, I'll take up the, the running on that. Um, the Port Leach Plain, as we call it, uh, lied in Aldred's garage for over a half a century. And um, it was in the rafters there. A lot of the old people in Port Leach remember seeing it there. But uh, between the jigs and the reels, it ended up in a, cl a collector from England's possession in around the late uh, 70s, early 80s, and remained there up to about uh, three years ago, three, four years ago. So it was kind of lost or forgotten about in that time period. I mean, its providence before that was that it was uh, an aircraft that was designed and built by the Aldred brothers in the, late, in the early 1900s, and uh, there was a flight attempt in, it in the early 1900s as well. And uh, things happened around that time. You had uh, world wars, etc., etc. so it got forgotten about, it got put in the rafters. But, yeah, three or four years ago, uh, another Port Leach native, Joe Rogers, happened to be uh, holidaying in the so south coast of England, he came across it in this collector's museum. It was in the back shed, out of way, gathering dust. And he wrote a few articles on it. Um, at the last, Major Colonel James Fitzmaurice, who was another famous aviator from Port Leach, we can talk about in a minute, uh, event in 2018, that was the, um, the 90th anniversary. Uh, myself and Teddy were talking about it, and we uh, mentioned uh, Joe Rogers' articles, and we said, why don't we go over and have a look and see, can we find it? We went over, met Carl Fuchs Halbard, who was the owner. He was the son of the guy who would have uh, taken it from Port Leash, uh, from Aldrich, back in the day. And um, we developed a relationship with him. We looked at the plane, and over time, uh, we uh, uh, inquired about getting a loan of it, but eventually he could see that it really belonged back in Ireland and we agreed to take possession of it. We went over, um, a few of us, John, John Fennelly, Terry Conroy, who's uh, a photographer in Port Leash, uh, was part of the team, went over, photographed it. We got a, an air ride truck, which was actually designed to carry aircraft jet engines, so it was a very soft ride back home uh, uh, from, from the south coast of England. And it arrived back in Ireland in a temporary location in Dunna Bay, first of all. Uh, where we introduced it to some of the aviation um, fraternity in Ireland, old and new. And uh, from that point, uh, we identified some guys that were very interested to restore the aircraft. So it ended up in the very capable hands of two master restorers in, um, uh, in Ireland, um, uh, Johnny Conroy, uh, sorry, um, Johnny Malloy uh, and Brendan O'Donoghue. So they were working on the aircraft the last couple of years. Uh, because of COVID, we were hoping to have it back in Port Leash earlier than this, but now we have it back, and this coming Sunday, we're hoping to uh, put it on display for the people of Port Leash and Leash in general. So that's the short summary of the story. That's, yeah, and I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, the basics is the first powered flight in what is now the Republic of Ireland took place out on the heat. No, um, it would have been in uh, a place in Port Leach called uh, the Golden Croft, which ah. is the field beside the railway station and the CBS. So yeah, there's some stories about it, uh, planning to be uh, flown out in the heat, yes. but that, was, that, that didn't happen. Like I said, they had the, the first attempt to take off, 
Uh, and, you know, even Colonel James Fitzmaurice will, says in his, his biography, he saw the plane taking off, but it landed pretty heavily. It landed nose down. And another very interesting part of the story, diverging a little bit here, we had a student from Queen's University, Belfast, took all of the dimensions of the aircraft, input them into a flight simulator they have in, in Queen's University, and he was able to replicate the flight, believe it or not. And we have a recording of that uh, flight simulator. What he did, he didn't actually, he did exactly what happened, what Fitzmaurice described. It took off and it ha had a heavy landing. And we knew... So it went nose first. It, it, it took off and it went no nose down, yeah? So yeah. The, the weight was too far forward. So by adjusting the weight on the aircraft in the flight simulator, he was able to fly the aircraft around and land it in the flight simulator model, which is fantastic. Like, you know, so the engineering was that close to being the first fully powered autonomous flight apart from that, that uh, center of gravity issue. So, I mean, there's some great engineering um, stories Incredible. there. And um, it's, it's a testament to, to the Aldrets uh, and to uh, John Conroy, who was the craftsman uh, on the wood, woodwork on the aircraft, that they were able to get so close to having, uh, you know, the first powered flight. That, that honor goes to Harry Ferguson in Northern Ireland, I think it was in 1912. But this was, you know, uh, in its own right, a very famous feat of engineering. And the Aldrich's were, you know, kind of pioneers in, in innovation and engineering at the time. They, they built the first motor car in Ireland. Yes. They had the underfloor heating in the first car in Ireland, believe it or not, they designed the system. And, you know, the, the, the craftsmanship, not only, you know, on the mechanical side, but on, on, on the woodwork side was fantastic. The, the guy who restored the aircraft, Brendan O'Donoghue, has said to me several times, he's never seen craftsmanship like it, and he's never seen wings designed with bamboo spars in any other aircraft. And that's what gave it the lift. It was so light in terms of, mm. of the wingspan and the length of the wingspan. You could not find timber long enough back then to make that type of wings, wingspan. Yes. And those bamboo po poles came from Ballyfin Estate. I'm not sure if you've seen that part of the story. So it's all oh. local, locally sourced material, uh, local engineering, local, local um, you know, skills that were, that were uh, used to build this aircraft back in the day. It's incredible. Yeah. So the, the Aldred Garage was a hub of innovation 120 years ago. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and to put, Michael, to put flesh on the bones, where exactly was Aldred's garage Aldred's for the viewers? Aldred's garage was opposite uh, the old vocational school. And uh, in fact, as a young teacher, I walked in, saw the plane in the rafters, saw a propeller at the front of the garage, wondered about it and wandered off because it, the re it seemed to have died locally. And it was only a, a few people kept remembering it over the years. One of the people who remembered it was Teddy Fenley when he was writing his story, Fitz the Famous Flight. Because an amazing extra part of the story is that as a young schoolboy, Colonel Fitzmaurice, as he later became, uh, helped uh, as a young schoolboy with the plane. It inspired in him an interest and love of aviation. He became head of the Irish Air Force and was himself and two Germans were the first to fly the Atlantic East to West in 1928. So on, the on the Bremen. On the Bremen. Yeah. So that's why you have Port Leash Plane and Port Leash Fitzmaurice Committee very interested. And of course, from a Leash Heritage point of view, this is a great story of innovation, engineering innovation, but it's bravery, if you like, near recklessness. The, the, the sheer... Uh, courage of these two young men to tackle five years after the Wright brothers, uh, uh, to have a dream and to actually dream about building the plane, building the plane and flying it. Now granted it was a short flight, but I believe it's a very memorable one and it's absolutely part of the story of Leash, which we believe the people of Leash should feel very proud of. But how, I'm wondering, how, like, did they have blueprints? So, I mean, yeah, um, just taking up the story there. It was like Michael said, five years after uh, the Wright brothers, but uh, that instilled in an awful lot of people around the world interest in aircraft. So there was um, uh, an aircraft uh, exhibition in Blackpool, and uh, Mr. Aldrich Sr. Uh, paid a visit there. So there was another famous aviator called uh, Blerio, flew across the English Channel first time. If you look at the Blerio aircraft and the Portage plane, you can see a lot of similarities in the design. So he would have looked 
at you know what he saw in Blackpool, brought back those ideas, would have seen something on, on, on Blerio. So he incorporated what he learnt from those trips into the design of the Fort Leash plane. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. And it's incre incredible to think that Port Leash had that light engineering heritage. It, it, well, you see, Port Leash has had most amazing people. You have had uh, the man who, uh, Bartholomew Moss, who founded the first maternity hospital in the English speaking world, uh, later known as the Rotonda Hospital in Dublin. Uh, you have had most amazing other people in every direction. So they, we, we're not. We're delighted and we're celebrating it, but we're not totally surprised that Port Leash produces again and again amazing people. Ama ama absolutely amazing people. And, and just behind you, gents, we have it up on the big screen behind you, the, the moment that the, the plane uh, arrives in Port Leash and just the care the men, uh, when they're handling the plane, mm. I mean, yes. it's, it's, it's but lovely but to see. But, but one of the things to celebrate, and Alan is an absolute example, people who are so enthusiastic about aviation and about the achievements of these men. Uh, it, it, it's a joy to, to watch how everybody in, in Leash who's asked rallies around Leash County Council, the Heritage Officer in Leash, uh, the Air Corps, everybody comes in and joins. Now, partly, I have to say, due to the skills of Teddy and Alan in managing to... Uh, interest all the rest of us in it. Absolutely. Like Teddy, Teddy Fenley and, and Joe Rogers and mm -hmm. others. Yes. Mm -hmm. But primarily Joe and Teddy, would I be right in saying this, yeah, deserve I can't, I can't our, forget, our thanks. Um, another, another great engineer, in my view, uh, John Harris from Emo. Yes. John, John actually helped des design and build the undercarriage for the aircraft, you know, as, as close as possible to the replica as possible. And there are th th great engineering skills there. You know, we've, we've had uh, involvement from Line 3 Airfield as well. On the day next uh, Sunday now, you'll see four aircraft from Line 3 flying over Port Leash. Wonderful. You know, breaking, you know, I don't know if anybody's aware of this, not, but there's no fly zone over Port Leash because of the prison. So we, yes. the prison service actually came to our aid and helped us get that over that hurdle. So That's wonderful. And, you know, so it's inv involvement of everybody in the community to make this event happen. Yeah, everyone, and, and, everyone's and, and buying into it. It's great good to because see. Because Colonel Fitzmaurice's father was a prison officer in Port Leash. So, <laughs> so they're, they're the, only cir the circle the keeps circle coming around again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, it was meant to have this celebration during Heritage Week, which is a national event every year, and before COVID would involve half a million people. So it's one of the biggest events nationally every year. Now, due to an adverse wind alert, it, it has been put off for a week or two. Yes. But the Heritage Council, which uh, I'm speaking for now at the moment, is extremely interested in this and feels this is a perfect example of where people looking at things that have been achieved in their area feel a great sense of pride of place. Yes. And it really tells us all, this is a place where great things have happened and will happen again. Yeah. Ab There's absolutely even a musical yeah. aspect to it. Yeah. So uh, the Leash School of Music um, actually composed a piece for the Fitzmaurice celebration. They will be playing on Sunday as well, this piece that they composed. And it's called The Impossible Dream. And as Michael said earlier on, you know, the Aldrets and Conroy's, you know, building the plane had an impossible dream. Fitzmaurice had an impossible dream. That's all encapsulated now in this new piece of music that you'll hear on Sunday. Impossible dream, but they, yeah. they, they dreamt on a huge scale. Oh, I mean, yeah. to, to cross the Atlantic yeah. then... I mean, they were taking their lives in their hands. Well, you see, the courage and the, if you like, daring do of it all is amazing. But yet you come back to something you touched on earlier, the engineering skills. I mean, for example, we hope at some stage to stick up a statue in Port Leach to um, other great uh, people. For example, um, if you think of uh, the railways, uh, you, who would you think of there? Oh, Thomas Dargan. Dargan, who is from Leash. Great. And, of course, uh, amusingly, there is a commemoration in both the Port Leash platform and, and the Carlow one. So there we, we are very convinced that we settle the thing for once and for all with a great statue of man who employed 50,000 people uh, at, at the height of endeavours and who really built the railway system in Ireland. So the, their engineering... <laughs> Absolutely. Skills are, are part of, of uh, it's, it's not just great warriors. Yeah, going, going back to the Aldrets, I yeah. understand also they had a, uh, an, an important uh, 
input into Ardnach Kusha power station. Yes. Some of the mach- machinery in Ardnach Kusha was designed and built by Aldrich. So lo- lots of little stories it's to follow incredible. on there, you know. It's incredible. Yeah. Now, gents, I, I hate putting guests on the spot, but I'd like to throw this suggestion out that surely the Port Leash plane should be the centerpiece of a county museum. Well, obviously, sorry, Al, I have to jump in there <laughs> first on this because yeah. as former chairman of the Heritage Society, I've been beating that drum for years. But there are, possi- there are difficulties. Th- to set up a museum, you need a location, a place, a secure place. You need staffing and security and so on, and you need enthusiasm. We have the enthusiasm. We're looking for the place, and we would need the support of Leash County Council, really, we believe, to carry this out. But believe me, I believe the Port Leash plane would be, if you like, the centre and the greatest uh, display in that new one. But we wouldn't forget the O'Moors and the the great civilisation before the plantations. We'd remember our plantation colleagues who came along and disputed for 70 years yes. uh, in Leash yes. to see who they was a, going to win. a slight disagreement. <laughs> by slight Jim. disagreement <laughs> that ran over 70 disagreement. years and 17 armed <laughs> uprisings. But yes. absolutely, I agree with you. And mm. I know Alan would as well that this Port Leash plane deserves being displayed and cherished and, and remembered in Leash. Yeah. And the best way to do it is a museum. Absolutely. And a yeah. There's another little nugget that I forgot to mention, the engine on the aircraft. Unfortunately, it was, uh, um, I think it was disposed of back in the 1950s as scrap metal, which is uh. a shame. But we do have a great description of the engine in Teddy's book uh, and from Fitzmaurice. It was a three-cylinder inline uh, petrol water-cooled engine. And the, the, the crankshaft and the block came from Tongent Haggart very famous foundry in Dublin. Yes. So based, based on that description and based on um, the design of, the, of the, um, the, um, the Wright Brothers engine that they used, uh, with the help of another very, very po- important member of the team, Tim Costello from Dublin, who was an RTE producer, who produced the first two Fitzmaurice documentaries, believe it or not, Tim and myself were able to locate a, uh, um, a gentleman in the US and Texas who builds replica engines uh, and replica aircraft. So they have built uh, a re- replica of the, uh, of the uh, Aldrich engine, which will also go on display next Sunday. So that will be there yes. for people to see. That's brilliant. Mm. And, and speaking, Alan, of next Sunday, like what, what is the programme of events? So uh, the venue will be in the uh, settings of the old school, Vera, which is now School of Music. Uh, so we've secured, with the help of TJ Kavna. Uh, the venue there, so it's covered over. Hopefully, we won't have any weather issues yeah. this time around. But it's a great venue. Uh, so we'll be kicking off at uh, 2 p.m. and uh, we have members of Leash County Council, and uh, we've Teddy, we've Michael speaking, uh, and we have over t- I think 200 uh, guests coming along. Fortunately, it's sold out at the moment. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the plan is to have some of the music that I mentioned earlier on from Leash School of Music. Um, and then we're going to have fly past afterwards, and we're going to have a, 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 um, a walk around the plane. Everybody wants to see it. Uh, we're going to have the involvement of the uh, Irish Air Corps. They're going to do a guard of honour, and then we have the UN veterans also taking part, and they're going to help us look after the plane as well. That's marvellous. That's marvellous. And it's just great to see all strands of the community, the local community, coming together and supporting this. And the fact that the prison service is allowing a fly past. It's marvellous. Well, it's beautiful yeah. and fitting, fitting tribute. Yeah, but it's a fitting tribute, but it's exactly, it's got everybody's imagination and everybody, ha- I'd say, Alan, you confirm as uh, co-chair of this committee, you never have found it easier to get people on side. Absolutely, you know, everybody's really enthusiastic yeah. and um, can't thank them enough for their support and uh, hopefully we'll have a great day on Sunday. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we, o- we owe all the volunteers on, on both committees, the Fitzmaurice Commemoration Committee and, of course, the Port Leash Plain Committee. And the Leash Heritage Society. And the Leash Heritage Society, absolutely. I know Catherine Casey has helped you oh, immensely. Yeah. Catherine's done a great job. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, Louise Cal is our, our secretary. He's done a great job. So, yeah, no, um, nobody... Uh, I'm sure we've forgotten some people, oh, but... But, uh, but just to mention, yes, yeah. Leash, Leash County Council. Leash County yeah. Council have been marvellous over the last 20 years 
in actually stepping up to the plate and backing uh, the history and heritage of Leash, which I have to say, which I shouldn't say, wasn't always the way. But yes. they, it, it, they're, they're really terrific at it. And I think that a lot of the credit there is the great work of the heritage officer and so on. But really county managers and councillors and everybody's staff have rallied around as well. So it's terrific. It's and terrific. They're, they're right to because this is a great this is a great thing yeah. for Leash. It's a feel good story. It's and we can totally something we can all be proud of. Yeah. 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 Well gentlemen, yeah. thanks for coming in this evening on a very, very wet evening. Uh, we're, we're delighted to see you and we're de delighted to, to, to be almost there. Sunday is the big day and the, the, the local people will get, get to see it in, in the flesh and uh, it, it sounds like an, a very exciting day. And as I mentioned before, a fitting tribute to what was a wonderful achievement. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks gents.